Okay, the flying hive tyrant. Now, when I was assembling my walking hive tyrant and swarm lord build, I pondered adding this version. It just means a different tail and legs, but I noticed that the membrane of the wings also connects along the torso, as well as the connection of the main support that is the ball and socket. My magnets are nowhere near that powerful, and in fact, I'm concerned about the collateral that would be caused by ones that were actually up for the job. So I grabbed a box, pulled out the sprues, grabbed my trusty wire cutters, and started to extract all of those bits out of their frames. And here's everything you end up with. Then, with my X-Acto, I began trimming off those little nubs, and then angled it to the plastic and began scraping away all of those mold lines. The torso is just snapped together, and a couple of extra pieces fill out those carapace vents. Assemble the tail, add the connective hemisphere to the tail, and then add the legs. Glue the assembled tail to the base, and then on to drilling. I'm still depleting my stash of Magnet Soul Magnets combo pack for miniatures. I had started with 300 magnets in three sizes, but I'm now running a little low. But I've probably got enough to finish this build. As usual, grabbing a column of magnets and dropping them onto the base of a drill bit so I can gauge which one is the right size to get a good fitting hole. Dropping the drill to the torso socket, I drilled into the interior, gave the drill a little wiggle to ensure the magnet fits, and then with an old toothbrush, gave it a quick scrub to get all the loose material out of the way. Because of the wings, I only needed to drill out the lower sockets for the weapons. A drop of superglue, and then slotting in one of the larger magnets, and using a pen or the back of a brush to steer it into position, and then left it to dry. Grabbing the exacto, I placed a limb to the torso. Kind of checked the angle needed to get the pose I wanted, and then chopped off about half of the dome to get a nice flat surface in which to drill. This being the bit that would otherwise be taking up the space where the torso magnet currently resides. Then, dropping the column of medium magnets onto a different drill bit, and once the right size had been eyeballed, I drilled a little pit in all of the limbs. Again, a quick application of the toothbrush to clear away the debris, add a dab of superglue, and then push the column of magnets to the established torso magnet. It repels, so we are good to proceed and push the magnets into the pit and wipe aside, letting your thumbnail slide along the separated magnet to stop it being yanked out by the others or flipped over, which tends to happen, and then you have a mad scramble to dig it out as the superglue irrevocably hardens. So, on to the rest. The scything talons get magnets, the bone sword and lash whip get a magnet, and then for the artillery, the Stranglethorn Cannon, and then the always reliable Heavy Venom Cannon. My favourite. For the cannon, it's best to kind of eyeball the rough pose needed, and then cut the ball socket to facilitate that pose and get the magnets in. Then add the feed tube limb and the cannon limb to the torso, and then snatch the citadel glue and connect the feed tube to the weapon when everything is in place. Right, glue the torso onto the towel, drop the head into place, and then add those massive epic wings that really remind me of that awesome bull dragon from Reign of Fire. <laughs> grabbing the Mr. Dissolved putty, so I can use an older brush to gently paint the lines of the putty into the gaps created by the connections, mostly where the carapace was locked together, and where the two sections of towel also connect together. 
Once this was all dry, I dropped the box, I got some hiking boots in, and I've been using as my spraying box onto my patio, and with the Army Painter Primer, gave the whole thing a good coat. Time for a quick preliminary play with the loadouts. First up, the Heavy Venom Cannon, then a pair of Scything Talons, then the Lash Whip and Bone Sword, and finally, checking the Strangle Thorn Cannon. Very splendid. Okay, on to painting my High Fleet colours. This is probably one of the largest models I have, so let's watch that pot of McCrag Blue just dwindle away from covering all this surface area. And then Zerus purple on the chitin, white scar in the vents and the gills and the mouth, and at the end of the ranged weapon barrels, and also the end of the lash whip, and then add the nihilic oxide to the areas of white scar so I get that nice bioluminescence effect that I so like. And then to join my depleted blue, the null oil drains away as it is applied all over this monster fellow. I left it laying face down so the null oil pulls up against the sections of overlapping chitin to get a deeper shade in those locations. And then the Imric blue dry. Loading up that trusty dry brushing brush and painting a solid hue on the tips of the talons at the ends of the barrels and on the whip and the sword tip and on the larger talons and from establishing this solid colour it sheds enough paint that the brush is perfect to swipe across the rest of the limb to get a nice dry brush effect. This means you don't have to just waste paint by dabbing on a paper towel or something to shed the paint so you can get to dry brushing. Anyways, with a metal ruler dropped between two glasses, when I finish painting a limb, the magnet means it can be clipped to the ruler to dry in peace. With all the limbs given blue tips and a nice dry brush to bring out all of their details, the same tactic but this time on the main tyrant model. The claw tips get the blue, and then I brushed along the phalanges, the metacarpals, the radius, and the humerus. Because, well, I was interested in what these things are actually called and looked it up. And then some brushes across the... Uh, the... Okay, I'm not even going to attempt these, so let's just call it the membranous wing bits. And then painting the chest talons so I can dry brush the ribs and legs. Then applying some more to the tail so I can start dry brushing along the tail towards the body. And finally, the forehead machete-esque blade so I can dry brush down it and touch up the sides of the head. And then... Out comes the Ethereum Blue Dry, and a more frugal application to the tips of all the weapons and on the wings and the body, and I also made sure to dry brush around the small tails in the... in the... Thank you. Your word is ham. Ham. H. Letter of A. A bunch of other junk. S, 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 P, 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 P. The end. I'm sorry that's incorrect. Dang it. So that they stand out a bit more. And then dry brushing also really makes the wrinkles in the wings pop. Then onto the Jean Steeler purple on the hooves and the chitin and the carapace. Once all this was done, time to get the paint off of the magnets to improve their attraction. Once again, my lock picks are the best solution because they are delicate and accurate and not sharp so they won't do any damage if I miss. A rack is really good, but I just cycled through trying a few different ones and getting all of the paint off. And then on to the base. Some dabs of super glue to anchor some quarter inch chunks of small weld slate stone into place, and then a squirt of Elmer's that I painted around so I can sprinkle on that eighth inch slate. Pressing it into place, I then left it to dry. Once dry, invert the model, tap the base to shed the loose stuff, and then arrange all the limbs on the metal ruler so they can get a spray of Army Painter Anti-Shine from about a foot away. And then, the same on the Hive Tyrant itself. And now, to check out the finished item. The Scything Talons. The Lash Whip and Bone Sword. The Heavy Venom Cannon. And the Stranglethorn Cannon. And here it is the foremost commander of the Tyranid Swarm, 
a psychic juggernaut and a devastating physical threat. It swoops over the battlefield, slaughtering all before it while serving as the synaptic linchpin for the numerous alien bioforms. And while it lives, the synaptic imperatives can be broadcast across every tyrannid creature, granting them terrible and overwhelming abilities, protections and enhancements.